Take Penn State to win. Take them to cover because the Nittany Lions are going to blow this Illinois team out of the water. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, that is right. You are locked on Nittany Lines. Thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Zach Seiko. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply and penn state is finally matched up here week three on the road very reminiscent to 2022 where they went on the road against auburn color out same thing again it's an orange out for illinois in champaign as they host the nittany lions and i said that this one was going to be the toughest road matchup for Penn State, not because of Illinois, the team, but because of the situation. Drew Aller's first road game, his first Big Ten start. Illinois, I thought they were going to be better, but it turns out they have taken a major step back from their success a season ago. The identity they had is gone. We're just going to jump right into it and cut to the chase. Penn State's going to beat Illinois 42 to 17. And I'm going to lay out what Penn State and Illinois are going to try to do offensively and how you stop each respective unit here. But I, I want to do this right out of the gate and get the prediction out there and give my main reasons why before I really go in depth as far as what each team is going to do, because that's what you ultimately care about. Okay. What's the prediction? What's the score? How are these teams going to do it? Penn state is going to win this game. They're going to win it by a lot. 42 to 17. You can mark it down. And I got four main reasons why the Nittany lions get it done against Illinois. The first reason it's, it's personal. The, these are college football players, young men. Okay. Yes, college football is becoming a little more business-like because of NIL, the TV contracts. That's not what the discussion is here. It is still personal, and emotions are higher in college football than they are in the NFL, okay? Not everybody was on that 2021 team that saw the nine over that played in the nine overtimes game. Oh no, nine overtime game. But James Franklin remembers. We talk about him being petty. It's personal for him. So for the rest of the team, it's personal as well. We've seen him get revenge on Minnesota. He's going to do it against Iowa in the whiteout game. Penn State remembers back to these times where these iconic games, whether they were 2018, 2019, 2021 here with Illinois, where they have a chance to exact revenge. And that's what this is. This is a revenge game. This is a mock, whatever that is, the orange out, whatever, the orange soda out. I don't even know. But Penn State is going to go into that knowing, like, you're trying to copy the white out here. OK, that's what you're doing. So all of this is going to be into consideration. It's bulletin board material. The nine overtime loss in Beaver Stadium that derailed the 2021 season, not the Iowa game. OK, you lost to a top five opponent at that time. Right. Both teams were ranked inside the top five, but losing to a three and five Illinois team at home when you were top 10 in the nation still. That's what derailed your season. And Penn State really didn't recover from that. So it is personal. They're going to stick it to Illinois and bring out. This is where they break out the game plan. So think of Auburn 2022, where they saved a lot of secrets, both on offense and defense, to break out for an opponent that they're just going to take very. It's not to say they didn't take West Virginia or Delaware seriously, but now you just kind of turn up the heat here in this case. It's personal. That's the main reason. Number two, I mean, Penn State's just purely better than Illinois across the board. You, I know the game's not played on paper folks but Penn State has a lot of four stars and some five stars to go along with those players Illinois uh, pretty much built on all all three stars other than Luke Altmeyer who's the starting quarterback transferring in from Ole Miss 
Illinois is mainly just comprised of guys that were rated not as high as Penn State players, and Penn State has been shown to develop players a little better, even though Illinois had some good NFL players that were drafted just over the course of this past offseason. But still, those guys aren't back, and, and Illinois doesn't have as much talent as they did a year ago. Penn State just purely outclasses them in every sort of way when it comes to that. Number three, and this leads exactly into it. Illinois is not the same team. They are just purely not what they were a season ago. They're not ranked as well. I mean, this was a top 25 team in terms of the analytics. But when you lose all of your vocal points from a year ago, let's start with the fact that defensive coordinator Ryan Walters is not there anymore. He's now the head coach at Purdue. And that is where Illinois is struggling the most. They can move the football, okay? They showed it against Toledo. They made a they made a comeback run against Kansas. Now, I know Kansas doesn't have the best, best defense in the world, but the offense isn't necessarily the problem. It's the defense. Giving up the points that you did to Toledo, giving up 34 points to Kansas, and the way that the Jayhawks were just able to run through them. Ryan Walters is no longer there. That's a big deal. It's also the fact that they lost everybody and their brother in the second. Secondary. Devin Witherspoon was a top five pick in, in the draft, went to the Seattle Seahawks. Then there's Jartavius Martin, Sidney Brown, arguably the best safety duo in, in the Big Ten college football. That's high respect. I, I want to give that to them a, a season ago. They were all taken in the first three rounds in the NFL draft. And let's throw on top of that. Kendall Smith, and, and here's the lost production between those first three players I named in the secondary. 32 passes defended and 12 interceptions. Then when you add Kendall Smith on top of that as a versatile defensive back, 37 passes defended and 17 interceptions lost from a season ago to go along with your defensive coordinator. Uh, you also lost part of your identity. Okay, this is a Brett Bielema-led team. We know he likes to ground and pound, respect the, gr respect the rushing attack. Chase Brown's not there anymore. 1,600 plus yards from Chase Brown. Your leading rusher is gone. Your leading tackler at linebacker, Isaac Darkangelo, is no longer there. Your entire identity behind a good defense, a really good defense, I might add, with some iconic players on that group last year, and your rushing attack to go along with it is completely put to bed. It's put to rest. It's not the same that it was a year ago. So, Illinois is going through a bit of an identity crisis. Reason number four, Penn State is just built for Illinois this time around. You're bigger and better in the trenches. You have the offensive line. You have a top five pick in Olu Fashionu protecting the blind side of Drew Aller. And then defensively, you got bigger in the interior. You got some crazy talented defensive ends to go along with it in Chop Robinson. Adisa Isaac denied Dennis Sutton. Okay, Penn State is ready for this matchup. They're not going to get bullied around. They have the ground game to now control the pace of the game rather than Illinois dictate the terms. Uh, Illinois is still strong in its front three. I mean, particularly Johnny Jerzon Jer Newton, Johnny Newton and Keith Randolph Jr. Those guys returned from a stout defense a season ago, but it's just, it's just not enough. And Illinois, frankly, we're going to talk about this in the final segment with Illinois' offensive game plan. They don't run that ground and pound anymore. Maybe they might break it out against Penn State to see if it'll work, but I'm saying that the Nittany Lions finally have the counter for that. But more importantly, Illinois runs a spread offense now, and Penn State is designed perfectly to stop a spread offense. So if they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Ohio State, which runs one of the better spread offenses in all of the country, and that's just across the board. I'm not talking about specifically 2023's group, even though they are a little back, they're a little behind, but... Illinois runs spread, and they aren't even a fraction offensively of what the Buckeyes are, right? Okay, so that's my example here. So Penn State's defense uh, is going to have a field day here, okay, because they match up ideally with Illinois. Now let's look at an overview here just to give everyone the setting, the big picture, but that's the prediction. I want to get the prediction right out in front of the video of the podcast so you know what Penn State is going to do, and they're going to win 42 to 17 over Illinois convincingly. Penn State is a 14 and a half point favorite. They opened up at 11 and a half. The total is 48 and a half, 67 degrees, cloudy day uh, for kickoff in Champaign, Illinois. It's going to be a 12 p.m. Eastern kickoff, uh, local, and then local kickoff will be at 11 a.m. And then Fox is going to carry the game. Now, the Fox pregame show was actually supposed to be in Champaign to preview it. They've moved it over to Colorado. And 
what can you say? I mean, Deion Sanders has kind of taken the college football world by storm, but that's okay. Fine. Let this one fly under the radar for Penn State. Don't show, I say, don't showcase it to the nation. I, yes, it's going to be on national television on Fox. I get that, but don't let it, don't even give the added coverage here to show that the Nittany Lions are a true college football playoff contender this season. Penn State is 20 and six all time against Illinois, nine and four at Illinois. James Franklin is one and one, 500 at Illinois. Penn State number seven coming in with a two and zero record against West Virginia and Delaware. Illinois one and one, honestly, should be 0 and two. With the game against Toledo, they were somehow able to come from behind. Toledo's a really good MAC team. I'll give them that. They should win that conference. They are, and they could finish in the top 25 as well. Then they lost to Kansas, and I know the game was 34 to 23, but they were playing from behind for a long time. So that's the low down on the game. Penn State is going to win it, but how are they going to do that? What are they going to do offensively? What are they going to do defensively to counter what the Fighting Illini? want to do under Brett Bielema. Before we get to that, let's hear from one of our sponsors of today's episode, and that is LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's easy to create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs. Then add your job in the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are, in fact, hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and ultimately hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. And a locked on Nittany Lions is the place to be your go-to podcast for happyvalleyinsider.com. Check them out. Penn state rivals for all the latest in Penn state football coverage and recruiting news as well. And locked on College football kickoff live is back today for Friday. This is when this episode is going up 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time across every Locked On College channel. You can find it live on YouTube. So check it out to get all the latest in college football to head into as we get into week three. Uh, very interesting. And I will be making a guest appearance on the show for Friday, September 15th edition to talk some Penn State, Illinois, which is what we are doing here. Let me know in the comments. Let me know your predictions for this game. Am I far fetched? Is Penn State, um, is it closer? Does Illinois actually put up a fight? The Sharps think so. If we're talking from a betting perspective, the sharp, the quote unquote sharp betters, the experts in Vegas, think that Illinois definitely covers the 14. There seem, seems to be a consensus. The public, it's 90% of bets are on the Nittany Lions. And then all the sharp betters really think that uh, Illinois is going to be able to come within two touchdowns. They're, they're confident of that. Let's talk about when Penn State has the football here. Penn State can do a variety of things, but I think we're going to see a lot of the status quo, okay? Ground and pound, play action to open up, the, whether it's the tight ends or the wide receivers. And you could air it out with Drew Aller if you really wanted to, but I think we're going to see a lot of the same from West Virginia and Delaware. We're going to see a lot of 12 personnel still with a lot of two tight ends. I think we might see some more. This is a maybe but I, I'm pretty confident that we could just to see what Penn State, if they want to get comfortable with it. More Nicholas Singleton and Kate Tron Allen on the football field at the same time. So 22 personnel or even 21 personnel, okay? You don't necessarily need two tight ends for that formation. But imagine a, spread, a split shotgun with Nicholas Singleton to the left hip of Drew Aller and then to the right, Katron Allen. You fake it one way, play action. You dump it off to say Singleton in the open field. Uh, good luck stopping that. Okay. Illinois runs a three, four defense and a lot of nickel packages, nickel zone. So that is perfect for Penn state's ground and pound mentality. Okay. You have the running backs to do it. You have the offensive line to do it. And then you're going into a matchup where Illinois is essentially dare it. The three, four is designed to stop the pass and get pressure on the quarterback. And okay. For Penn state, 
yeah, uh, Penn State's going to have to find a way to make sure that Drew Aller is protected. I respect Illinois' front three with Johnny Newton and Randolph Jr., as I have mentioned. But when we're talking about uh, defending the run, I mean, Illinois just looked bad when it comes to stopping the run. Uh, Kansas in particular, but Toledo had a lot of success. So who's to say that, okay, if Kansas was able to have this kind of success against an Illinois defense that Penn State with Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen and the offensive line they now have to go along with it, couldn't have a better day. Uh, that's, that's yet to be seen. The game's not played on paper. It's played on the field, but the run game, the extra tight ends are going to counter what Illinois likes to do defensively. The offensive line, let's go along with this. The offensive line is also well-rested. You had Olu Fashionu out of the Delaware game, Hunter Norzad. You got to cycle in some other guys, J.B. Nelson. Uh, Venga Uwane started that game for Penn State. So now you got uh, you probably have the best depth in quite some time on the offensive line. The everydayers know that Nittany Lion fans know that, but now it's really on full display. You got the freshmen, some experience, the offensive line is rested. You're splitting carries between Singleton and Allen. Nobody is tired going into this game. Okay. No one is being overutilized here. Penn state is as fresh as they can be. And now defensively, we're going to talk about some of the players coming back, but for Penn state, they are just, they're not injured. They're not banged up. Knock on wood. You know, everybody's healthy at this point in time. But we're going to see a lot of the same game plan. You're going to see a balanced attack, play action. The tight ends will be used more for blocking to go up against that nickel defense by Illinois. The running game will be very successful just given uh, the alignment that Illinois is going to uh, show up. And for key players for the Illinois defense, watch out for Newton. And Randolph, I has mentioned, they're called the law firm. Okay, they're called the law firm. But they're very, they're, they're going to be cycling all over the place. They're really positionless along the line of scrimmage. And, and Penn State's going to have to double team. New, Newton's a, a future high-end NFL draft pick. He might even go in the first round. I haven't looked at his profile enough to know how just how good he is. And we're going to see that on Saturday the 16th here. But Newton is definitely a day two pick. I would say he could even be the back end of the first round. That's how that's how good he is. Uh, and Randolph is a good compliment to him. Uh, as the linebackers, really nothing stands out there. They, they have struggled to stop the run uh, in the defensive backfield, right? The secondary that has gone through a complete makeover. I, I would say that Miles Scott and, and Xavier Scott are, are definitely the players to know. They have an interception each. And, and they basically had to mature with all the changes that have gone in the secondary for Illinois. But that is what Penn State is going to do offensively, stick to the status quo, stick to the game plan, uh, and, and do what has been very successful. And they're going into a matchup that is going to help them out with that as well. Now, what is Illinois going to do, and how is Penn State going to stop them defensively? Let's discuss that in just a moment. But first, another word from our sponsor of today's episode, and that is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I hope you're ready for the NFL season because it is back. And so is FanDuel with incredible offers, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. That is right. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. That's quite the offer. So now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is super easy to use and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props to totals, money line, you name it. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, we know the prediction. We know it's out there. It's going to be 42 to 17. And, and may I remind everybody, all right, may I remind everyone that uh, this show is spot on with the Delaware game, 63 to 7. I, I hope I'm in the ballpark. I hope I'm spot on with the Penn State Illinois game, uh, the final prediction here. So let me know in the comments what you think this outcome is going to be. Uh, this is what Illinois is going to do when they are on offense and how Penn State's going to try to stop them defensively. Okay. This is not your father's Brett Bielema team. When he was at Wisconsin, when he was with the Badgers, when he was with the Razorbacks with Arkansas, uh, Brett Bielema was under center, but that had to do with the offensive coordinators. Okay. The fighting a line I have an offensive coordinator that is coming over from UTSA and they ran a lot of spreads. So uh, like I've said before in the past, and maybe I should make this more apparent. Yes. James Franklin has input in the final say on what the coordinators do offensively and defensively, 
but it is Mike Yurcich's offense. He is the head coach of the offense. Manny Diaz is the head coach of the defense, and that's the case of Brett Bielema's system. So Brett Bielema might have a preference for the ground and pound, let's go under center, nine offensive linemen, but his offensive coordinator likes to spread it out. And, and you have the quarterback to do it, right? The, the spread offense is emphasized with the horizontal scheme. You have the dual threat quarterback. Luke Altmaier is very good. I, I like Luke Altmaier a lot. And he's, he'd be a problem with just about any other program. Former top high school quarterback. I know he didn't work out at Ole Miss, transferred over from Ole Miss. He's been running a lot because the offensive line has not helped him out. The wide receivers, they've given up interceptions for him watching that Kansas game. They drop passes into the hands of the Kansas defensive backs. Okay. But he has excellent arm talent. We talked to Doug over from Illinois rivals and Doug says that he had, he can make all the throws and I believe him, but he doesn't have the time to sit back in the pocket to do just that. I think he's too good for Illinois. Really. I think he should have transferred somewhere else. He is carrying the remnants of whatever the offense is. And he's their leading rusher to this point, may I add. He's been sacked eight times in two games. It's an average of four per game. He's got three touchdown passes to three interceptions. The interceptions aren't his fault. The wide receivers, let's discuss them in a second here. Running backs, Reggie Love and Josh McCray. I respect them. But they're even the two of them, if you brought them, fused the two together, you're, they're not even a fraction of what Chase Brown was. Chase Brown what was a big reason why Penn State lost that 2021 game. Chase Brown was the reason that Illinois was so competitive just last season. The offensive line is, is not the same. And that's really weird because Brett Bielema is still the head coach. He's still the prime recruiter. And the offensive line is just not helping out this they're just not often helping out the offense in general. And there's a lot of front side pressure. So Luke Altmaier has to roll to his weak side, his non-throwing side and, and roll to the left. That's just typically uncomfortable for quarterbacks to go the other way. Unless you're Patrick Mahomes, you can throw blindfolded at that point. Uh, as far as wide receivers go, you're going to see a lot of four, maybe even some five wide receiver sets. That's just, it's just what the offensive coordinator wants to do against Brett Bielema, but their leading wide receiver, Isaiah Williams. Williams was the quarterback, the starting quarterback for Illinois in 2020, if you can believe that. Now he's become the number one guy. He was the number one guy last season. It wasn't even close. He's the number one guy this season, still trying to build chemistry with Luke Altmyers. He's had two quarterbacks in two seasons here. For Penn State defensively, how do you counteract what Illinois wants to do? So, so talking to Doug from uh, Rivals Illinois, this was good to know because Illinois – wants to run the football in first and second down, even though they spread it out, even though they have more of an aerial attack, uh, they don't want to be a throw first team. They want to establish the run, control the pace of the game, which fits the theme of Brett Bielema, right? As the head coach, but all Penn state has to do is control the ground game. If you keep Illinois' run game and force them into obvious passing situations, they don't have the arsenal to get it done. Penn State doesn't have to leave extra defenders back. You can put Kalen King on an island. You can put Johnny Dixon on an island. Daquan Hardy is supposed to come back. You're starting Nickelback. I mean, Penn State is in a really good situation here. We have saw the man-to-man -man coverage that the safeties have been able to display, whether it's Jalen Reed, Keaton Ellis, K.J. Winston, Zach Key Wheatley. The safeties have really stepped up and their individual coverage assignments. So I, if you can force Illinois into obvious passing situations, they are just not going to have a, a good day. But Penn State does need to be careful about Altmyer's threat to run. And I could see more design plays because when Altmyer was running for his life against Toledo uh, and Kansas, that wasn't really by design. That was uh, ad lib. So just be careful of Altmyer's threat to run. You have Abdul Carter to really neutralize that. Garrett Green gave them headaches for the first time. So just, just be aware of that, that Penn State could uh, have a little bit of issues maybe early on in the game. But uh, for the fighting Illini, the ground game is just not nearly as effective. The defense is going to be on the field for a long time. Uh, it's important that Penn State is able to sustain drives the way they do, uh, and they're going to be able to keep Illinois' defense out there for a long time, tire them out. Uh, for Illinois' ground game, it's just not, it's not the same. Chase Brown is no longer there. They don't have the same guys on the O-line, in the trenches. You're not going to see the offensive line, the nine offensive linemen formations. You're not going to get any of that. Uh, but Love and McCray, like I said, not even close 
to Chase Brown. And then the wide receivers will not be a problem for Penn State secondary. They're not. They're going to be able to get the pressure. They could rush four and get the pressure, but I think Manny Diaz is still going to get blitz happy uh, and, and make Luke Altmyer just really second guess himself and try to get in his face because Luke Altmyer only three touchdowns and three interceptions. I know the wide receivers haven't helped him out, but still, quarterbacks that are on, under pressure are just prone to make more mistakes. And like I said, you don't have to put the resources towards the secondary. You can blitz. You can send five or six guys after a Luke Altmyer to a shaky offensive line and be confident that the guys behind you, the secondary, can all handle their assignments individually. So that's all Penn State has to do really is just stop the stop the ground game, make it third and eight, third and seven, third and eight, obvious passing situations. Force the turnovers because they've been prone to them. Three interceptions in two games. The wide receivers are not going to be able to break away from the man coverage. Penn State doesn't have to do anything fancy here. Uh, it, it's really simple, and that's why I said Penn State's going to get the win here, 42-17. to 17. They're going to stick it to Illinois, and they're going to prove they're going to use this game as hopefully to put them in the conversation that I, I don't want people to know about it nationally, but – at some point, you got to have the conversation that Penn State, a, a bigger conversation. Some people are talking about it, not enough, that Penn State is a college football playoff contender this season, and they're going to make Illinois just look silly. So we're going to have a live post-game show after this one is done. So I hope everyone enjoys the game. Enjoy a Penn State victory against Illinois. Revenge is going to feel so sweet. And then you got Iowa coming up. So we're going to talk about all of it here. So become an everydayer. Subscribe to Locked on Nittany Lions on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. And more Penn State football content is on the way here on Locked on Nittany Lions.